Greetings everyone. I hope you're well and having a great day. I'm Donovan and welcome to Burnout and Break Stuff. This week's BBS video will be covering our Duster 440 project car. I've owned this car for 21 years. Uh, I'm going to cover how I acquired it, some of its 21 year history that I have with it, modifications that I made to it, that type of thing. It was once a small block car, 318 two barrel, air conditioned, console automatic with like a 241 open eight and a quarter. And uh, I immediately started modifying it after I purchased it in uh, 2002. So in its current iteration uh, with its 440 from a 1971 New Yorker and uh, some upgrades that I've done to it, its current condition, it's been what off the road for the last well, April of 2014, for the last nine years, it's been off the road. I need to uh, repair a leaking carburetor. I need to repair and install its original valve cover. It leaks, so I need to put that back on there. I need to install a nitrous oxide electric fuel pump for that kit. And finally, need to do a Timken bearing adjustment on the eight and three quarter axle. So, uh, hope you enjoy the video and hope you follow along. And as always, I hope you have a great day. So, let's get into this. Thank you. First up on our list of getting her done is getting this air cleaner off here and exposing our carburetor so we can get the carb removed and get it into some carb juice to clean it up. So let's get started. One of the interesting things about this particular air cleaner that I purchased from eBay, it's for a 1969 only single four barrel application. And I'm curious about Don's automotive specialties from Newington, Connecticut. I used to see these advertisements in old Drag News magazines. Drag News was a competitor to NHRA's uh, National Dragster. Anyway, I bet Steve Mignante, I bet he knows about uh, Don's automotive specialties. Maybe he can uh, tell us about it. So anyway, let's get this up onto the roof here and out of the way. With our air cleaner removed, now we can see our 3310-6 Holly. I picked this up in a, this carburetor, I picked it up in a salvage yard off a truck for like 150 bucks. So it was an economical purchase. And uh, when I installed the 440, I wanted all the factory kick down linkage to operate the transmission under its own governor, that type of arrangement. All I had to do was modify the bracket here by adding a one inch piece of flat strap. So I split the bracket, added the flat strap in there. And then the bell crank here, where it would have hit the bulkhead connector, all I had to do was grind the back of the ball stud and move it from this side to the opposite side, weld it back in, that was all set. It's a very nice clean setup on the linkage here. So the automatic transmission works the way it should. So let's go ahead and get our springs and Linkage out of the way and get this carb off. With our fuel swiller off the 440 and up on the fab table, let's get it disassembled into the basket and into the carburetor bubble bath. Get her all cleaned up. With our Holly carburetor all disassembled, get it in the basket and send it to the day spa for a nice bubble bath and relaxing chemical peel. While that's doing its magic, next up we'll get to that valve cover gasket. So let's get busy. Next up, 
Let's get this MP valve cover out of the way and the Moroso gasket. Uh, it leaks pretty bad around all the studs. So I need to return the factory valve cover yep. with some right stuff and a gasket to help prevent leaking. back to bolts as well. With our gasket surfaces clean, we're ready to install our valve cover. But prior to doing so, pop quiz. There's two and a half turns. You can see on that rocker arm right there, the adjuster is a 3 8 24 adjuster. If there's two and a half turns on a 3 8 24 thread count adjuster, how much lifter preload do we have? That's the math quiz for the day. Uh, comment below if you know the answer. All right, let's get our valve cover installed. With our car back from Berryman's Day Spa, it's chemical peel and bubble bath all complete. It's been washed down with fresh water and blow dried with compressed air. All the, all the restrictions are cleaned out and dried. So we're gonna get ready to start our assembly process. And if MacGyver's watching, there's the check ball for the power valve blowout protection. So just want to let you know it's there, protecting the power valve. All right, let's get it back together. With our Holly 3310-6, manufactured in 1998, according to its little date box here, as uh, all gasket, clean, it's all set to go. Let's get it back uh, installed on the car, test it out. With our car rebuilt and installed, we're set to go there. One item checked off the Tadouski list. Next, we replaced our valve cover gasket, so you know, hopefully uh, it won't leak. Second thing off the Tadouski list. So third up is uh, electric fuel pump for our nitrous oxide kit. So you want to see something cool? Do you want to see something sexy? The answer to that is yeah, always. So let's check it out. Aeromotive. This company makes some very nice products. Automotive artwork, I call it. So I used the Summit version of this originally on the car for my nitrous kit. And uh, in April of 2019, my home was flooded. The car was in the basement shop up on three ton jack stands. Not three ton jack stands aren't high enough to keep it up out of 18 inches of water. So the pump, the electric motor portion must have had water intrusion. So when I turned it on to check it out, it blew the fuse. So I've got a replacement pump. Let's get it installed. Here's the worm's eye view of our electric fuel pump tucked away in front of the passenger side front spring hanger. You can also see on our Dynomax turbo muffler, the rust, rust through from having sat in water, filling up the little drain holes they put in the mufflers to allow condensation out. These mufflers sat for quite some time with that condensation still in them. And if you watch the very first video I ever posted the 11 second short called Caught Burning Out, you would be able to see the rust, rusty water blowing out of the exhaust system on the car. So anywho, here we are with our fuel pump. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and take the inlet off. I'll put a cap, a plug in that. Go ahead and cut this tie wraps free, drop our pump out, 
get our replacement in. With our pump removed from the duster and on the bench here, we can see the similarities in the pump, which caused me to buy this one back when I first uh, installed the kit. And so what we'll do now is remove our fuel filter. We'll go ahead and open it and check the screen to make sure we don't have any debris in there. Uh, crutch in our flow. We don't want crutches on our flow. And start getting the components, our fittings swapped over, pump back in the car. So let's get to it. With our fittings, fuel filter installed on our new pump, connections soldered and heat shrunk, we're ready to install the pump back in the car. I cleaned out the filter, it had a very small amount of debris in it. And once I was done with all of this, I was, what's the word, precocious, uh, curious. And so I got to monkeying with this pump. I took the bottom parts off of it and the veins, the motor showed me the motor was stuck. So uh, I went ahead and popped the top off of it. And sure enough, the, the motor was stuck. Had the, had the little tiny spring that goes behind the brushes, not flung itself off onto the floor somewhere here in the shop. And I can't find it right now. I could spend the next 10 years looking for it, but I'll sweep the floor tomorrow or something or other like that, and it'll be in the dustpan. Anyway, uh, still may be able to fix that, which would be great news. So, anywho, let's get this back in the car. So how'd we do? Well, as for now, it's installed. Everything's tidied up there. Next, I'll need to get some 10 amp ATO fuses to replace the blown fuse. And we'll have to give her a check out for operation and leaks. So that's where we are for now. Next up, we'll get our Timken axle bearing adjustment finished. All right, let's keep moving forward. Next up on our list to get it done is the Timken axle bearing preload adjustment. Service manual calls for eight to 18 thousandths of play. So let's go ahead and get our ground pounders knocked off of here and get out our dial indicator, our drums off, our bracket set up, and let's get that measurement checked and adjusted as necessary. Ground pounder. With our ground pounder out of the way, our drum drum removed. Our axle adjusting retaining clip is now out of the way. Our dial indicator is set up against the backing plate. And as per service manual, we have zero lash at this point. We're gonna use hammer and a punch on the little tabs. And we're gonna lightly tap the adjuster, backing it off approximately four adjustments on the retaining clip four little slots. So that's what we're up to, trying to establish eight to 18 thousandths end play. That's what we're up to. Let's get her did. Now, up close and personal on our dial indicator, we'll be able to see, there's 10 thousandths movement on our bearing adjustment. So let's uh, go ahead and return our lock tab and nut and torque to 35 foot pounds as per service manual. And that will complete this adjustment. One thing to keep in mind is both rear wheels need to be off the ground. Both tires need to be removed and the brake drums so you can get an accurate reading. 
Okay, let's get her put back together. With our ground pounders reinstalled after doing our Timken bearing adjustment, lug nuts tightened to 60 foot pounds. We'll have to double check that adjustment after driving the car. We'll have to bring it back in the shop, put it back up on the hoist, a lift, and uh, knock the tires back off of it and double check. So now that we've done our carburetor gasket, our valve cover gasket, our fuel pump replacement for the nitrous kit, and our Timken bearings, let's start checking our work. And first up, we'll go ahead and install a new fuse in our fuse holder here for our electric fuel pump, see if it blows the fuse or the fuel will flow. Will it flow or will it blow? So that's first up, let's check that out. Okay, we weren't able to pick up any fuel with our fuel pump. Pickup's a little bit high in the tank for what was in there for fuel. So we went ahead and put 10 gallons of premium unleaded in it with no ethanol. And uh, next thing I know, it's leaking onto the floor. So it's a good thing the pump works. So I'll go ahead and pump it back out into a container and have to fix that hose replace it. It's to be expected. Hasn't been on the road in nine years. Gonna run into some problems. With our failed AN hose from the tank to the electric fuel pump for our nitrous kit removed, I have it set up on this test rig that allows me to pressurize it with a tire pump. Pretty simple. Uh, it doesn't hold any air. Leaks, obviously. So I swapped the ends of my test unit and put the unit itself, the ends in water. The end isn't failed on either side. The hose itself has just become delaminated and makes, makes bubbles. So take these hose ends off, swap it onto some new hose, get it installed in the car making some progress. So let's keep with it. Just to show the viewer, what we see here in the shop is that monkey motion right there. No good. With our text, test fixture removed from the hose, we'll go ahead and remove our hose ends. We'll reuse those. Doesn't take much to on here as such. Let's wind these out of here. Pull the end off. So once we get both these ends off, now we'll have a hose for measurement and we'll get our new replacement Earl's line in here. This was not Earl's. This was a less expensive alternative that I tried. And I used three pieces of this all on the nitrous oxide side, fuel delivery. And this was the third one and it finally failed. The other two had failed years prior. So it was just a matter of time. So let's keep moving forward. With our Earl's dash six AN line, replacement ready here. Go ahead and get her open and they have uh, instructions here on how to make the hosing, hoser, and uh, warning to pressure test every hose. And I recommend keeping a log book on the hose installations, numbering, numbering the hose, pressure testing it, and keeping it with the vehicle itself. That way, you have a record from beginning to end, how old it is, it was pressure tested, held pressure for how long, that type of thing. And next up, we're going to put ourselves a piece of hose. And what we'll do to keep the ends from coming apart, a little black electrical tape, give it several good wraps, Keeping it fairly tight. Like 
so. Now with our hose cutter, right in the middle of it. We have our new length, we're set to go there. We get our soft jaws installed in our vise. on there. So our garbage is out of the way and the tape removed from the end of our new hose. I put the collar on and how I put those on is get the stainless under there and twist them in a counterclockwise manner and generally they go right up on there. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the hose, the rubber inside of the hose, right up against the shoulder of this collar. And from here, we'll slip it up into our soft jaws for our vise, leaving just the end of it out a small amount. You can see that our hose is very well up against there. Give it a little extra. Now, I'm gonna pull a little luber lubrication on our fitting and the threads here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna thread this in. This is gonna pull itself up into the hose and this collar right here will lock down on that one. So get it started by hand. Now we'll use our wrench. And just spin it up on there. It is really that simple. Got the right tools for the job. Makes it a lot easier than trying to hold it by hand and stand there and chase it around. Just a, just a firm snugging is all that's necessary. Doesn't need to get, don't need to get crazy with it. So that gives us our new hose end. What we need to do is put our pressure tester on it, tighten it down Put our pump on it and see how we did. So let's do that. Hopefully this isn't too boring for the viewer. all goes well, we will be holding pressure with this line. And there we go, 40, 60. So our pump, not that you can see that I'm gathering, but I'll just hold it up anyway. It says 60 and it's holding that pressure. I'll let it set for couple of minutes. I mean, this is the inlet side of the fuel pump. Doesn't have pressure on it at this point. So anywho, uh, let it sit. And it looks like we have a replacement hose made up, ready to install. Let's get it in the car. With our electric fuel pump inlet line returned to service from the fuel tank to the inlet of the electric fuel pump, let's go ahead and energize the pump and see how we did. Hopefully it doesn't leak anywhere and we have our seven to seven and a quarter pounds of fuel pressure for our nitrous oxide system. So let's give it a go. floor and I can hear it returning We're right at seven pounds of fuel pressure so that's all good news don't see any leaks here there so 
We have our electric fuel pump replaced and our nitrous kit will now work. So that's good news. All right, next up is uh, filling our carburetor with fuel and lighting it off. Let's get that done. With our nitrous side fuel line and fuel pump repairs complete and in operational order. Next up, let's fill our carburetor float bowls and start it up and see how we did with the uh, carburetor leak repair. So let's get busy doing that. Backfire.
way we get it off the off the lift, take it out here in the driveway and get on a little bit. See what happens. Well we can break. With our fuel swiller with gaskets to prevent leaking, that's all fixed. The valve cover gasket on the passenger side is no longer leaking. The original steel stamp, stamp steel valve cover has been returned. That's no longer leaking. The Timken bearing adjustments has been made. The nitrous oxide fuel pump has been replaced and everything is working in that area. Thought I would clean the car up a little bit so yesterday I washed it off and today we'll take a brief walk around and look at what the car uh, is as far as the body and the interior is concerned I purchased this car in April of 2004 for $400 it wears most all of its original paint the vinyl roof has been V88 uh, vinyl roof delete that happened when Eric had it due to some armor all he said. The vinyl roof was in great condition and he put armor all on it and then it started peeling off in long strips. So when I got it, I just finally pulled all of it off of there. So anyway, let's take a walk around and see what we bought for 400 bucks as far as, like I say, the body and the interior are concerned. It did not have meats and pizza cutters didn't have an eight and three quarter with 355 sure grip okay let's there we go overall the body is in pretty good shape it has a about a one inch diameter rust hole in the floor underneath the throttle pedal and that's as far as the interior compartment has rust that is it 
it has plenty of small dents and do dings on it but what can you expect for 49 years it's gonna have something wrong with it right far as dense damage type things done to it you'll see the whoop de doo right here on the quarter panel it's been scraped some dents and here on the back the tail light panel it looks to me like it might have had a tire put up against the back of it like it had died at one point in time or whatever and needed a push Let's take a look in the deck, in the trunk. So looking in our trunk compartment, we can see we don't have a rusted through spare tire tub. We got a little go gas there. Some juice. It does have the what I've Think is called a space saver package the fold down rear seat you can see the no sound deadening there in the quarter panels it looks like it was probably since it has spray on adhesive most likely had some type of a carpet type sound deadening when I when I purchased it from Eric, it had 14 inch donuts on it like that. That's the uh, you know, spare tire. They call those little, little spare tires that people drive their cars around on for however long. Our trim panels have delaminated from the backer board but maybe they could just be glued down and straightened up a little bit interior is exactly how I got it Eric had put a carpet kit in it the seats are definitely worn out need seat foam and uh, covers that's about two thousand dollars Put an instrument cluster in it up top where it's easy to see keep my eye on that oil pressure gauge since it only has a 187 oil pan on it four quarts and don't want to uncover the sump and start sucking air up into the bearings back seats in fairly decent shape We'll definitely need a strike plate replacement. I have several of those up in the attic and it will also need uh, lower hinge pins. That's what beats those out of there. If people would have just replaced them when they went bad, received a lot of problems in the future, but it is what it is. I'll take care of it. Our 152,000 mile 440 short block from a 71 Chrysler New Yorker. We'll get into that inside the shop. We'll talk about those things just prior to the ending of the video. Give a little bit more background on the car. It's nice and clean for what it was. It had a lot of oil windage from the leaking valve cover on the passenger side here and like I said, give it a give it a bath yesterday, clean it up a little bit. Well, let's let's get it in the shop.
with all of our repairs done on the 74 Duster 440 project, I need to still address a hood and some type of a hood scoop due to the matter the air cleaner sticks up into the hood. So that'll be next up on the list. We're not gonna to get to that today, but what we are gonna do is, uh, is cover some of the elapsed times and miles per hour that I you know, consider junk car racing. It, I'll get into in probably the next video uh, how I got from this to the 440 and uh, we'll go from there. But for right now, uh, let's get into the performance of the 318. Naturally aspirated, my best time was 1463 at 94 miles an hour and using a 100 horsepower you know, nitrous oxide plate kit from Edelbrock, I was able to get a best ET in mile per hour of 12714 at 106.83. So, and that's all done with a 355 sure grip and these very 235 6015 Mickey Thompson ET street radios. That's a 26 inch tall tire that's eight inches wide. So our nitrous uh, reduced our elapsed time by 1.293 seconds, which is pretty impressive for what was a, at the time a $350 nitrous kit. Now you have to remember that I added, I added an aftermarket fuel pump to help that out because there was no way the factory pump was gonna support the nitrous kit. That's something I'll get into the next video as well. So this, these times and miles per hour were run at the same day on the same event. Now, the 318, uh, the 904 broke due to my negligence of not checking the torque converter bolts they had backed out and the uh, converter had hit the transmission case and broke that transmission case at 107 miles an hour and set the car on fire. It was fun. So anywho, uh, I had a 383 and a 727 that I paid 50 bucks for out of a 69 Newport that I was gonna put back in this place. I originally bought this car for the $400 purchase price, which I stated in error just a few minutes ago in the video in 04, I in fact bought it in 02. So anyway, I was gonna put a 383 back in its place and I happened to be on my way from one job site to another and found a 71 New Yorker for $900. Uh, there was no way I was passing that opportunity up. So I picked that car up for the $900 and removed the 318 and it's broken 904 and replaced it with the 440 and 727 from that New Yorker. Still running it through its factory iron manifold. Uh, my best NA time was 12.998 at 106.55. So you can see that's quite an improvement. Uh, 122 cubic inch tune-up was doing its job. Now, uh, running 100 horsepower of nitrous oxide, the same kit from the 318. Noth nothing had changed as far as the uh, physical lineup of the car. It's still running on 235, 6015 Mickey Thompson ET Street radials, still the 355 gear. Nothing had changed, just swapping the 440 in place of the 318. Our 100 horsepower nitrous injection got us down to an 11695 at 116.33. So that is a reduction of 1.303 seconds in the ET and a 9.78 mile per hour increase. Pretty impressive stuff if you ask me. Uh, the 318 was, you know, a 157,000 mile engine. The 440, 152,000 mile engine. In the next video, I'll get into the differences of what I did with the 318 and then what I did with the 440. So that's pretty much gonna conclude our video for the day. I greatly appreciate everyone tuning in, you know, liking, sharing, subscribing is very beneficial for me right now. I'm trying to get to the 1000 uh, subscriber mark in hopes of seeing what kind of uh, revenue uh, YouTube pays for advertising. Anywho's, uh, I appreciate everyone for 
tuning in, checking out what's going on with my project cars. And what's most important for everyone is I hope everyone has an excellent day. I appreciate everyone watching. Thank you very much. And once again, have a great day.